Hey, welcome to The Monitor. As always, I am Peter Rubin, senior editor at Wired. I don't know, can you hear this? Me slapping my thigh? I'm taping an episode of Hee Haw on commercial break, so that's what I'm doing there. Uh, this week we have a movie that is actually pushing stop animation forward. You didn't think it could happen, but it can. We are talking about a video game that lets you be as hard-boiled as you want to be. But first we are talking about my most anticipated comic book of the year. Did I just say that? I actually did. Unbidden superlatives coming from my mouth. I didn't know that was going to happen, but now that I've said it, I realize that it's true. That comic book is The Victories by Michael Avon Oming, who you may know for his work as co-creator and artist on Powers, which is one of my favorite comic book series of all time. He also did Mice Templar. This is his first one-man show, creating, writing, and uh, doing the art on it. It has a little bit in common, I suppose, with Powers and maybe even with Watchmen in the sense that it deals with superheroes and their human foibles and idiosyncrasies. This is by no means untrod ground for comic books, but what's interesting about it is uh, Michael Avon Oming is coming to it as a, as, a, as a series to kind of unpack his years spent in therapy. He's been very upfront about this in interviews, and so it brings a very kind of therapeutic lens through which to examine the whole superhero thing and the vigilante thing. Uh, I, I've always loved his art style, and I'm really looking forward to more of his writing. You know, I've seen the, the preview of the first issue, and by the time you see this, I will have purchased and read the entirety of the first issue, but it is out this week from Dark Horse. It is a five issue miniseries that is seems to be concentrating on one hero in this six superhero group called the victories so hopefully we'll have many more issues to look forward to after this first miniseries but it has already jumped to the top of my pull list which if you are not a comic book reader you should know that is not as nasty as it sounds but enough about comic books let's talk about video games out this week with our man on the scene in hong kong okay thank you now why did I thank you? I'm the one who went to Hong Kong for this. But anyway, as you know, video games get a little slow in the summertime. One might actually say that the release calendar sucks, but that is not always the case. Things start ramping up a little bit in August. In the next week or two, we have Darksiders 2, and then in September, Borderlands 2 comes out. But this week, we have Sleeping Dogs, an act third-person action-adventure game from United Front Games in Canada, being published by Square Enix. It is, of course, based on Hong Kong action cinema. Uh, John Woo titles like A Better Tomorrow or Hard Boiled or movies like the Infernal Affairs trilogy which was remade in the States as The Departed which we all know and love. But the dev team from United Front took a number of trips to Hong Kong. They actually had a, a guide to get them inside the structure of the triad so it is a game that is about an undercover cop who goes into the triads to try to bring them down from the inside. It is a tale as old as Hong Kong action cinema itself and it is being used to great effect in Sleeping Dogs. There are some really fun uh, game mechanics, some really cool driving sequences in the game, and uh, a nice open world feel. So there's a lot of varied play, and it's a lot of fun, and it's, it's a sizable game, so it should get you through uh, until the game release calendar starts picking back up. But that is it. United Front Games, Sleeping Dogs, out this week. Pick that up. Back to you. Okay, thank you for that. Let's, let's talk about animation. Uh, for a second, because Paranorman is coming out this weekend. I love animated movies, and I love Pixar stuff and DreamWorks stuff uh, as much as the next person, but I also sometimes kind of miss the, the stop-motion techniques of the animation of my childhood. Hasn't been a lot of it in recent years. Um, Ardman uh, in England does it. Nick Park, who uh, was behind Wallace and Gromit, which you probably know and love. They made Chicken Run a number of years ago, and there was a Wallace and Gromit movie, and there was the Pirates movie, which came out earlier this year. They do very kind of traditional claymation-y stop-motion stuff. But Leica Studios, uh, based in Oregon, in 2009, they made Coraline, and they began this process of using some 3D printed parts, which is very in line with the whole wired maker thing. Um, so what they started with Coraline, they really ramped up and are going full throttle with on Paranorman. Uh, uh, so many of the of the facial parts were were 3D printed, and there are so many interchangeable parts. and And the way that they made uh, the facial animations and the expressions on the many characters is it's really incredible. We actually have a feature in our August issue, written by Wires Caitlin Roper and edited by the guy who hosts the Monitor. I forget his name, uh, but it takes you inside the techniques and and kind of runs the numbers on these things. And it is just so unbelievably intricate and complex, and is such a mind-boggling task what they've been able to do. But even 
even beyond that, the story itself is fantastic. It's, it's spooky with a lot of humor. It's about a kid who has to save his town from a curse. So uh, if you've seen the trailers during the Olympics, and you probably have, you get that there are zombies and monsters and things like that. It is a lot of fun, and, and we haven't been seeing a lot of these movies this summer, so it's nice to have kind of a kid, adult, spooky, animated thing. Frank and Weenie will be coming out later this year, but I'm more excited, to be honest, about Paranorman, which is out this weekend. But that's it for The Monitor. As always, we will be back next week with more pop culture. In the meantime, feel free to email us at themonitor at wire.com. Rage at us. Rage at us or love us. That's also good, too. We always welcome that. But we're taking suggestions. Let us know what you think we should be covering. Always listening, because that's what we do. That's what The Monitor is about. Until then, though, inspirational catchphrase here.